In this video, I'm going to be covering a particular type of preference in consumer theory known as perfect complements. So perfect complements are goods that are always consumed in fixed proportions. So in this video, I'll be going over the utility representation for these preferences. I'll go over some real world examples of perfect complements and how they relate to this utility function. And then I'll also be going over the indifference curves for these preferences. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with the utility representation. So we can go ahead and write this as u, which is our utility function, as a function of, in this case, two different goods. Let's call them good one and good two. That is equal to the minimum between two possible values, x1 divided by some parameter a, and x2 divided by some parameter b. And I'll go over what these parameters a and b stand for in a second. And if you're curious about this utility function, this is known as a Leontief utility function. So one way we can interpret this utility function is as follows. So a consumer prefers to consume a units of good one for every b units of good two. So that's what these parameters a and b refer to. And this will become more clear as we go over some examples. So I'm going to go ahead and write this minimum operator as a piecewise function. The minimum operator between these two possible values, x1 over a, x2 over b, is equal to x1 over a if x1 over a is less than x2 over b, right? So this minimum operator just takes the minimum between those two different values and spits out the smallest one. Or it could be equal to x2 over b if x1 over a is greater than x2 over b. And these conditions actually both hold with equality as well, right? Because if both these two terms are equal to each other, it doesn't matter which one we write down for the function. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go over some real world examples. So probably the most popular example that you'll come across um, is the shoe example. So specifically one right shoe and one left shoe. So in general, you're going to expect shoes to be perfect complements, right? You're not going to want two left shoes and one right shoe or vice versa. You're going to want to have one of each. So I want to represent this with the utility function. Now we have the form above. So let's go ahead and figure out what the parameters are A and B. So in this example, again, looking at or interpreting that utility function the same way I did before, which was A units of good one for every B units of good two. In this case, a would be equal to 1 and B would also be equal to 1. So we can go ahead and write the utility function for right shoes and left shoes to be equal to the minimum between right shoes and left shoes. So it's relatively straightforward. You just need to know what those parameters A and B are. So now let's go ahead and go over another example. So suppose we're looking at one car and four tires, right? So those are the fixed proportions we're talking about. You're going to need four tires for every car that you have, right? Although who knows, maybe you gain some additional utility from having a spare tire. In this case, let's go ahead and just treat these as perfect complements though, for the sake of this example. So, a is going to be equal to 1 in this case, and B is equal to 4. Therefore, we can write the utility function, which depends on the quantity of cars and the quantity of tires, as the minimum between XC and XT over 4, where again, I'm just using that utility representation from above up here, and I'm just plugging in the parameters accordingly. Now let's go ahead and go over the indifference curves for perfect complements. 
So in order to illustrate the indifference curves, I'm going to pick a bundle equal to x1 at A and x2 at B. And you'll see why I chose this bundle here in a second. So let's go ahead and evaluate the utility function at this particular bundle. So u evaluated at A, B is equal to the minimum of A over A, B over B. And as you can see, I chose the bundle AB because the A's and B's are going to cancel here. And what we're left with is the minimum between the values 1 and 1, which is obviously just 1. So at this bundle AB, the utility function is equal to 1. So what would happen if I doubled the quantity of good 1, but I kept the quantity of good 2 at B? Well, if I did that, my utility can be written as follows. So it is the minimum between 2a over a and b over b, or the minimum between 2 and 1, which remember the minimum operator just takes two values and it gives you the smallest one, so that's still just 1. So what this tells you is that these two bundles both give you the same utility of 1, right? And intuitively what's going on here is if this consumer likes to consume with, in proportions A units of good 1 and B units of good 2, if you give them some arbitrarily larger value of good 1, let's say 2A in this case, that's not going to increase their utility because they still only have B units of good 2, right? So if we were to continue this logic, let's say to 3A, or 4a, etc., we would end up tracing out this horizontal line and it would just go on forever, right? So every bundle on this horizontal line would give you the same utility equal to 1. Now we're not finished tracing out this indifference curve though. So now let's consider the case where we double the quantity of good 2. So the new bundle here is A and 2B. So let's go ahead and evaluate the utility function at those values. So we have the minimum of A over A, 2B over B, which can be simplified as the minimum between 1 and 2. And again, taking the minimum there gives you 1. So doubling the quantity of good 2 while keeping good 1 at A yields the same utility and using the same logic as before as we continue to increase the quantity of good 2 but keep good 1 held constant at a value A that's going to yield the same utility right because this consumer likes to consume these goods in fixed proportions at a ratio of A to B right so what would happen if we were to double the quantity of both goods? So in this case, we have, let's say, a quantity 2A and 2B. Well, evaluating the utility function at those values gives us the following. So it's the minimum between 2A over A and 2B over B, which is just the minimum between 2 and 2 which just gives you a utility equal to 2. So doubling both goods actually gives us double the utility. And again, using the same logic as before, we would end up with this L-shaped indifference curve, right? Where the utility for all bundles on that curve, and I'm putting curve in quotations here because it's L-shaped, is equal to 2, right? And we could continue that as long as we'd like, we'll have another one up here where we triple the quantity of goods. 
and the utility would be equal to three. So there are infinitely many indifference curves that we can draw, right? And they're all going to be L-shaped. Now there is one last thing that I want to touch on when it comes to these indifference curves for perfect complements. And that is, there is a line that we can draw that actually passes through the kinks of all indifference curves, right? So that line starts at the origin, and again, it passes through all of these kinks. And this line can actually be derived by setting the two minimum, the two values in this minimum operator equal to each other. So if we set x1 over a to x2 over b, and if we solve for x2 as a function of x1, then we can actually recover an equation that represents that line. So we'll have x2, so just solve for x2, um, is equal to b over a times x1, and that'll give you that red line, right, where the slope is equal to b over a.